All right, I think we're live. I always say I think we're live. It says we're live. I wait for confirmation from my producer, Nancy. Or Jen. Oh, because we have a... It is now. It is now. We always get it. Live. Awesome. Yeah, Welcome, we always get to, delays. Welcome to After the Shoot, In the Raw After the Shoot. Tonight's drink uh, is the Chocolo... Cho excuse me, Chocolatini. <laughs> is anybody drinking the Chocolatini? Here he is. That is three it's ounces of vodka. You need to pass the vodka. So. Okay, three ounces of vodka, one and a half ounce of Godiva chocolate liqueur, one half white cream de cacao. Creme de cacao. That too, yes. And uh, several chunks of milk chocolate. That's awesome. Sounds good. Gotcha. Okay, chocolatini's good. Music in the background. I think that's Tammy. She's in a coffee yeah, shop. Music in the background. What's that? There's music in the background. Is there music in the background where you're dishes? Somebody yes. Playing dishes. <laughs> There's music. <laughs> Let's say Tammy. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. If she needs to mute it, or, or I can turn yeah, it down. Tammy, if you're when you're not talking, just mute and yep. then okay. talk in that way. Yeah, we do that sometimes. Yes. Let's see. Awesome. Well, let me see who we got on tonight. Uh, I want everybody to go through and introduce yourself. Tell me who you are, why you're here, <laughs> and uh, and where you are right now. Let's start with Sherry. Where am I? Hi, I'm Sherry. <laughs> I live in Grinton, Nebraska, and I own C. Phelps Photography. Just moved up from Georgia. There you go. Jolta. I have my second chunk of TV, and I'm going to try to keep it clean. I'm going to try to keep it clean tonight, but I can't. It's been a long week. Work-life balance has been fantastic this week. Fantastic. <laughs> and it's seen. Now you got it. All right, Jen, you are back. Jen. 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 I'm going to change my name to Jen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm back for the moment. Okay. Uh, all right, Jen Basford. I'm one of the owners of Senior to Ignite and the owner of Three Girls Photography. I'm in Edmond, Oklahoma, in my studio. Um, what else were you supposed to say? That's it. You're good. I'm drinking a chocolatini, and I have O positive blood. There you go. Important. I'm on negative. <laughs> yeah, but I can save everybody. Me too. No, you well, can't. Negative can't mix. Hey, can somebody tweet out the link? Because I have people that, just like always, it can't. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. You have to refresh. You're just going to have to refresh. It's on our Google Plus page. Oh, okay. okay. And then I can always. Uh, and our YouTube page. Rachel's going to shoot it out, too. And I'll put it out on Twitter also. We'll get it out. We'll it, yes. it on our Twitter page. Get it done. And my main man, Nate, is here tonight. Nate, I spent okay. a lot of time in your program today. I built two sticky albums for a couple of awesome senior models this year. So tell us who you are, what you do, and where you are. Awesome. I'm coming from cold Minnesota. I'm Nate Grayak, founder of Sticky Albums. Uh, I am constantly struggling to achieve work-life balance. For, I think the good evidence of that is I've been been invited to, I think, all of these. <laughs> this is the, the first one I've been able to attend. So this is our, if we don't hear from you, bye. <laughs> yes. And this was your last chance, Nate. You were actually going to kick And this, this, is, this is also counting the fact that I have Nate's cell phone number. So it's oh, awesome. yeah, which we will be posting shortly. So. Perfect. Good. Good. Thanks for having <laughs> me, guys. <laughs> Thank you. We'll also be posting this girl's number because she's an awesome – contact to have. Rachel, tell us who you are, where you are, what you do. I am the Law Talk. I am a lawyer and photographer. I'm a lawyer for creative professionals. I am in Washington, D.C., and I think I'm here because I can provide a little insight to balancing uh, family and work because I have four kids. <laughs> and so I think I'm balancing it all. We'll sh we shall see. There you well, go. You probably got it more together than most of us. I think she does. <laughs> I don't know. Your newsletter yeah. is, uh, I subscribe to your newsletter, it's great, and your Facebook board is packed. Yeah. I'm going to start Wait, what, was what was your name again? <gasps> <gasps> My heart hurts. <laughs> the law talk. That's all you need to know. All right, now I get to meet somebody and introduce somebody new tonight. All oh I know God, is... She's like hot. Hello. <laughs> Hotty toddy. <laughs> Yes, she's hot. It's Stacy. Stacy coming to the stage. 
Me? This one over here? Yes. Hi, my name is Stacy Jensen. I am the owner of Color Veil. I'm also a photographer, and I'm here because I cannot balance my life and family. This is my counseling session. There you go. That. I like that. Really yeah, there's, a, there's a podcast that says this is not uh, the words of a professional uh, med licensed medical person. It's more like a waiting room that doesn't suck. That's kind of <laughs> what this has become, you know? I like that. I am here for you guys to help me. No, I'm not here for you. I'm here help for, me. Help for you, Stacy. Help me help you. Okay, Tammy, you are not at home. Where are you? Unmute yourself. Uh, oh, look at her. She's on. Okay. I yeah. am, right now I'm in New Mexico at okay. Starbucks, but our studio is located in Chandler, Arizona. So that's me, Largo Photography. What are you doing in, uh, where are you? In Mex New Mexico? Yes, in New Mexico. Oh, what are you doing there? We have a second studio. So we're just taking care of business up here. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I'm the guy with the teeth, John D. Pyle. Um, I'm, your host. I'm down in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, I'm excited to be on here tonight because I want some solutions to my work-life balance. Because if there was any more hours in the day, I would find a way to work in them. Um, I would buy them. I would buy them. <laughs> Okay. You know, bidding. <laughs> who watches uh, House of Cards on Netflix? Me. Yes, it's a great show. And, and uh, who's the lead guy? What's his name? Frank Underwood. Kevin Frank Underwood. Kevin Spacey, right. He had a comment about sleep. I, I need to Google it. But it, it hit the nail on the head because for me, sleep is like the biggest waste of time. It's like, I, it's like a, you know, you're being uh, put down for a little bit, and it drives me crazy. Because I could get so much more done if I didn't have to sleep. I think. <laughs> I think so. I, think so. I got a question for everybody to run through before we get started on this topic. Because tonight we're talking about work-life balance. How many hours a night do you sleep, Sherry? Hold on, hold on. John, let's get uh, that disclaimer out there first. Just, uh -oh. Yeah. If anybody's listening with kids, just FYI, throw some headphones on. <laughs> we're about to get real. I cannot control these people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And another disclaimer, I'm excited because uh, we get to do this kind of stuff because of great people that support us like Nate with Sticky Albums and also our lab, White House Custom Color. Yep, big thank you. Big thank you to them. And Sherry, you're awake right now, but how many hours? Oh, and for people to tweet. You know, here's yes. the thing. Sorry. Jen, Jen, go ahead. Say that. We're so <laughs> Everybody says stop. Jen, you talk. Sorry. Oh, no, Jen's reminding John, but I'll, I'll say it if you want. Okay. If you guys are watching us live, which we can see all of you do that, so this is awesome. If you want to tweet out or Instagram or something, so anything cool that you see from tonight's episode or anything that we screw up, which, you know, humor always wins in my book, um, just hashtag at Seniors Ignite or, um, and or after the shoot, and you could win one of our – does anyone have their bar glass? I'm drinking a martini. Anyway, you can win – one of our Seniors Ignite after the shoot bar glasses. There you go. Or we're going to give away two things tonight. The second one being a Seniors Ignite shot glass, which can help you with that elusive work life balance. <laughs> All right, back to your regularly scheduled program. Yes, and back to Nate's. Nate found the quote for me Frank Underwood, I've always lo loathed the necessity of sleep. Like death, it puts even the most powerful men on their backs. Great quote. <laughs> Sherry, how many yeah. hours? Um, actually, I just uh, downloaded this really kick butt app. It's called the Sleep Cycle, so it actually keeps track of our sleep. Oh, I want to get that. Does it work? I got that. Starbucks free thing of the week this week. Yeah, Very so cool. I downloaded it, and um, it says that my sleep sleep quality is about like forty, like thirty to forty percent, which means it pretty much sucks. I fall into deep sleep one time a night, and I sleep on average about four hours a night, even though I lay there. Seven. I just think like last night I came up with some fantastic stuff. I just yeah. I can't. don't you always have better ideas at night? Like I'm like I, holy shit! I fixed the world. Yeah, I have written my sister's entire uh, bridesmaid. I have to give the bridesmaid speech in lir in limerick. I've figured the whole thing out, but I can't remember <laughs> it when I wake up. <laughs> Jen, what about you? What sleep? Yes. What's sleep? Yeah. yeah, I don't sleep. I try to sleep, but I don't sleep. I can fall asleep, well, sometimes, 
sometimes I can fall asleep easy if I'm overwhelmed and exhausted. And if I do, I'm going to be up and my mind's going to be going. I don't sleep well at all unless I have a mental breakdown and crash, and then I can sleep for days. Yeah. Well, without the help of psychotropic meds and alcohol. Without the help of psychotropic meds, alcohol, or mental breakdowns, I don't. Yes. And I'm a hey, night. What about you? Um, I sleep. I try to sleep six to seven hours. What? I'm, what? I'm posting a, a link. This dude. Uh, That's your problem, Nate. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jason Cohen, he posts this, this awesome thing, like, every, on every, uh, like, New Year's, it's like he has this great blog post, and this is this year's, I just I posted in there, where he says, you're most productive when you're in the zone, but yeah. also we were just saying, like, the best ideas come in a flash when we're not working. Like, mm. it's so important to, like, to stop great working cycle. for a minute, great so that cycle. we can... That's when we, the, like, we, we, your head hits the pillow, and all of a sudden, you're, all the best, like, ideas come. Oh, my God, all this stuff that, like, comes unplugged. We can't force ourselves to be creative. you got to, like, create silence and stillness for that stuff to come to you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And that's why Nate hasn't been on our show, because he takes a nap or goes to sleep. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, Rachel, law talk, kids, you don't do anything. How many hours No, I don't know how many hours. It's not really fair. I have a four-month-old, so, um, but in all fairness, since my husband's listening, he gets up with the baby. Okay. Uh, so, uh, probably about five to six hours. I try for about eight hours of sleep if I can. Um, it takes about an hour or two to decompress, uh, but I keep a journal. This sounds really geeky. But I keep a journal with me at all times, whether I'm in the middle of the grocery store or on my bedside table, that is just filled with random notes and comments so that when I do sit down to work the next day, I have everything ready to go. I've been known to jump out of the shower and email myself something from my phone um, because I thought of a great idea so that I could write the blog post about it. Because I'll probably forget about it from the time I get to the shower to downstairs because I have four kids to get through in order to get to that point. I thought I was the only one that emailed myself. Just mm -hmm. crazy. I text myself. Does that? You text yourself? I yeah. yeah. I Nancy yeah. texts herself too. I have to email myself. Yeah. yeah. Do you? Casey, like, what about you? Do you feel that you're so important that you'll high priority your own emails to yourself? Like. <laughs> like <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, my assistant handles all contact between me and myself. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have an assistant. It takes care I have something I can say right now that would be so fantastic, but I get so much hate mail. Put Don't it on the comment it. section. I'll read it anonymously. Anonymously. <laughs> yes. Stacy, how many hours a night? I would say I would probably get about four hours, but that's between wow. yeah, but that's between having teenagers and a, a serval that sleeps in my bed. So yeah. I get like nothing. So wow. I've started using SaneBox. Has anybody else heard of SaneBox? Yeah, I just saw that. What is that? Uh, so it's like, you know how like Google Tabs, they added the tabs that automatically filter shit? Like, that doesn't work it very well. SaneBox automatically filters the stuff that's not important and lets you look at it later. And if you want to, like, just send an email, you can hit reply and, and have it be like, nope, I want this to come to me, like, tomorrow. Like, I don't want to yeah. look at this email in my inbox right now. I want it later. Huh. I tried that. I don't want to. I paid for. I paid for a year of same box because Joy Burks. Love you, Joy. Love she you. Don't to do this. Downloaded it. Oh, I all of a sudden had like four thousand emails in my email account because it just duplicated everything. I don't know what I did. I must push the wrong button. I called well, him like. Maybe that's just Joy's newsletter going out. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the funny thing. When, when I canceled Sanebox and it went back to normal, it said, "Are you sure you want to go back to the chaos you once had in your life?" <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. You that went to smart. Insane Box. You did the wrong one. You did Insane Box. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. All right, Tammy. The question was, how much how much time do we get to sleep? Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. I probably get about seven hours of sleep. Okay. I used to stay up like really late after I put the kids to sleep, but that just didn't work for me. So I make sure I go to sleep right when they do, and or if you know about thirty minutes, hour later. But um, staying up late working was just not working for me or for my kids. So I usually get up early, but I go to bed 
when I put them to bed. So. That's cool. <laughs> if I did that, my kids would be getting to bed at 1 a.m. Because I would, I would be like, I go to bed with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've changed. I've, and just like Tammy, I've changed. I used to stay up to 1 or 2. And now I try to go to bed when everybody else does. But we have a 9-month-old, almost 9-month-old. So that affects that. Um, and I get I go to bed early and I try to get up super early now. I can get I can get so much done between like five and seven a.m. Yeah, okay. unbelievable compared well, to. I guess the question is: Is there a direct correlation between the hours of sleep we get and how creative we are? I think you're gonna say how crazy we are. No, that's it. We already know that. That's well established. See, I think I think the reality is for all of us on this call, being creative is not a challenge. We, right. we, that's our that's our our strength and our greatest weakness. Like getting stuff done and, and within like a set amount of time. And, and turning it off, that's the challenge. Turning it off, exactly. Absolutely. I think that's why it's so important to have somebody working with you who is, I mean, I'm so far on the side of creative, ADD. I constantly have new ideas. I, I sleep new ideas. I think new ideas. I'm constantly, my brain is constantly, constantly moving. But it's nothing, nothing's really logically formulated. It's just all these awesome ideas. Because <laughs> awesome, they're the awesome ideas that I have. Now, do they all come to fruition? Absolutely not. Because a lot of them drop to the floor because I don't have anyone to reel me in and say, okay, that one right there. Let's talk about that one and let's make that one happen. So that's why I need the left brain logic in my studio. I would say it definitely requires having someone with you that can balance who you are. I, with my assistant, thank God she's there. Not only to bitch at me for too many ideas at one time, yes. but also to make them happen because, like you, Sherry, I will just come up with all kinds of stuff. Like, crazy. And then she says, really, we don't have time for that. Let's get back to what we were doing last week. With, you know. And, you know yeah, I had, a, I had an appointment with my tax accountant, and she's like, I had to get her some stuff to finish up my taxes, which literally made me snot cry yesterday, by the way, BTW. Um, and I told her, I'm like, you have to give me a deadline. If you don't give me a deadline, even with my accountant, I will not do it. So give me a deadline. You have to know that about me. So she's like, next Tuesday? I'm like, done. I'll have I it done. Have deadlines. I have deadlines for sex. At this point, there is no time for anything. There's just <laughs> Yeah, it's time you're on your own. <laughs> That's awesome. I buy Jen Best Friend. I when. Hello, yeah. Yeah, but what about those that can't afford to have an assistant or don't have maybe a spouse or a friend that they can put ideas <laughs> off of? So then what? What help keep what helps keeps you in line from doing too much? I mean, because literally this book is just ideas. There is no logical flow to this whatsoever. Why are you raising your hand? Because I want to talk next and I interrupt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Because I mean, and, and it's, this is kind of, um, I feel a little hypocritical. I'm sure my nose is going to grow. But um, as my friend Casey Graham says, I am on the journey with you. So here we go. I used to fight this big time. I used to say, you know what, I like being able to go when I want to go and do what I want to do and be on my own schedule and I love the freedom. So, but what does that create? It creates chaos, right? And it creates where we're at right now. So in order to have that freedom, you have to put structure in place, okay? And I fought against that for years because, and you know, those of you Seniors Ignite leaders, we've talked about this. This is how you get out of hell is you have to put your structure in place because if you don't, and if you don't, I mean, you're going to screw up. That's fine. But you have to say, okay, you know, block time. This is when I shoot. This is when I edit. This is when I do sales. Okay, so if especially if you're a one-woman show, okay, especially if you're a one-woman show, people think, dude, I've got a whole week. I can do how many sessions, right? Yeah, you can't because how much does each session take? 30 minutes of phone calls, 30 minutes to prep for the session, one to two hours to shoot the session, one to two hours to prep the session, um, you know, one to two hours to do the sales, an hour to do the ordering, I mean, you know, whatever your times are, and you have to block that time, you have to block each of those things per session, and if you don't do that, you're going to be working 23.75 hours a day, um, you know, and that's assuming you, you know, go to the bathroom the other point two five hours, and that's it. So if you're just blocking out times to shoot, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, and then I'm selling, I have no time, everything, you need to get a calendar, you need to get a killer planner, 
and block. Oh, Ethan's so got a color planner. planner. Yeah, let me show mine up in here. Okay, yes. Stacey I love mine. Big. Bomb planners. And you need to take the planner, whatever planner you use. Everybody's like, oh, you know, you can go get this at Colorvale. But go, I mean, I don't care if it's whatever you use is right. Paper. If it's a planner, <laughs> digital planner, whatever. And you take that and you block time every day. This is when I shoot. This is when I do whatever, you know. And, and use your days wisely. Use your creative days on creative. Don't mix them. Um, Nancy Nardi did a killer, well, it was an email. I'll hmm, we'll have to make that a blog post at some point. So if you're on our email list, <laughs> you got Nancy's email the other day about makers versus managers, about how you have to switch your brain back and forth. Mm -hmm. So try and keep it to a full day where you're creative and a full day where you're structured and schedule that out. Now, if you don't schedule that time, like if you have a time set aside for a shoot and you didn't book that shoot, I'm pretty sure you've got things you can fill that time with. But if you did have that time blot and you have that time blot for when you're editing, that helps you get your life in order and that helps you only take on what you can do so you become more profitable and you can start outsourcing and hire people and, you know, however big you want to grow. But freedom and flexibility start with structure. So, Rachel, I hate yeah, you. can I oh, go? Good, good soapbox. Absolutely. I'll, let me, let me, I, I want to chime in. So, like, wait, no, Rachel had her hand up, Nate. Oh, she did. I'm sorry, I didn't I see did. that. I did, Nate. Come on. No, I was going to say just to piggyback off of Jen was that I think I think people don't know how to plan, and I'm speaking from experience of doing this. They don't know how to plan because they don't know how many inquiries or sessions they're going to get. Your clients and inquiries don't dictate your schedule. You dictate it. If you only want to shoot four to six sessions a month, only shoot four to six sessions a month. There are supports you can put into place to schedule out. Because I am one of those that I'm a people pleaser, and I always want to make sure I can get everyone and do everything that I can. And slowly but surely, I've started having to respond to emails that, hey, I can't do that till May. I can't do that till June. And you know what? My world hasn't collapsed. Well, and you know, to go on that, Rachel, just real quick here, you know, let's say, for example, and I don't care what your number is, one, ten, a thousand, let's say you want to shoot four sessions a month, okay, just whatever your number is, don't just open four sessions a month, right? okay, open up enough so that you can fill it, but right. monitor it, evaluate yeah. once a week when you do your planning, and if you sit down once a week and you see that you have your four sessions or maybe you have five, then pull the rest of yours off the schedule, and move forward so that you know but that it's it's like you said it's hard to plan planning is hard I get it it is trust me it is but you I mean figure out what do you want to make how much do you make per session how many sessions do you want to shoot you know back into that PPA has a really good calculator out that they just released I was playing with it the other day where you can put in your numbers and you can figure out what you want to make so if you go out to the PPA website it'll tell you that stuff and you can start to figure that out and plan for it write it down Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, Nate, go ahead. All right, so I want to chime in. Uh, Jen, I used to do the, the day thing, too, like just because I felt like I needed a whole day to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. I read the book, um, Your Brain at Work. Yeah. It's super good, where it talks about there's different types of things that our brain, like our brain has like several muscles in it, and it gets tired of doing mm -hmm. a certain type of work after a while. So I've learned to do like to save email into a certain time of day and to do different types of work at different times. Like one of the analogies I love is like Barack Obama, wh whatever you care about the guy, like he's got, a, we all have a limited amount of decision making capital in a day. Like there's certain, de there's certain decisions like <laughs> don't, don't, don't waste your muscles on stupid decisions. Like what am I going to wear? What am I, I going to eat? For my car. Exactly. Right. Like just, set those things like if you look at some of the world's greatest leaders like Steve Jobs and other people like that they just wore the same thing every day they just I stop and I'm think about it anything but that right so you just you, like be really conscious of how we waste our decision capital we sit around and think about like what should I do about this that or the other when it's that's like you're wasting your brain's muscle on stupid stuff when you've got to be really careful about what you're focusing on. Or what are they going to say if I put this on Twitter or Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Waste of muscle. <laughs> yeah, or getting worried about drama going on in your, you know, in the lives of your clients or non-clients. Yeah. Exactly. 
So I was I wanted to to bring this in a little bit because I read an article on this today in preparation for this, and and it was an interesting perspective from uh, a kind of a clinical psychology side of it, where um, people who don't have a good work balance, one of the reasons is is because they are so like geeked up and charged from the entrepreneurial side of their life that. They're creating. They're with their team. They're blogging. They got the computer going. Decision making. They're they're running a business, and then boom, they have to put that down and go and you know kick the ball in the backyard, or throw the ball with their son, or help their wife put up the dirty clothes, or you know whatever. That's nothing in comparison to what they deem excitement with their their job. You know, and we're in a unique position because we love our job. And you hear about a lot of people in corporate America. You know, they push for work-life balance because they want to be more time with their family. They don't really like what they do. They look at it as a time card and, you know, I get there, What? how much longer do I have to be here, then I get paid, then I can go home, etc. But we are, are charged up and energized by what we do. So I'm curious to y'all's thoughts, I mean, without saying, you know, hey, I, I don't really like my family, I'd rather work, because that's not what I'm saying. But <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Well, we kind of talked about this before on one of the other um, after the shoots that we had about how family may see, perceive it that we are all into our work and only into our work. But that's also, like at the very beginning, that's a, that is a big strength, but it's also a weakness at the same time. So I think a lot of that offsetting it is communication to family. And I know <laughs> with my husband listening that I, I, I fail at this daily. Um, it's something that I have to work at to explain to them. I don't want to work in place of you. I just thoroughly enjoy it and thrive on it as well. Well, and I think too, Rachel, you know, for me as a single mom, I have in, in a one-woman mm -hmm. show at this mm -hmm. point, you know, I only have so many hours a day. I have the same exact amount of time in my day as everybody else does. Mm -hmm. But where people have, you know, a spouse, a significant other, a, uh, you know, somebody who works in the studio for them. I do everything by myself. And Nate, you were saying your brain can only have so much capacity to make so many decisions every day. I am tapped out with making decisions probably by noon. And I'm not even joking with you. Like, I feel like by, the, by noon, I'm done. I'm tapped out. I can't make any more big decisions. Like, what heater should I buy? Should I put a new engine? Literally, should I put a new engine in my car? Like, these are the sorts of things that are coming up. And so... For me, the work-life balance is not necessarily that I don't want to spend time with my kids or I really love my work. It's that if I don't do it, nobody else is, and I have deadlines just like everyone else does, and if the album needs to be made by tomorrow at 5 so I can get it to them by Tuesday, it has to be done, and the only person that's going to do that is me, and I can't farm that out. There are certain things that I can farm out, and I'm, I'm learning that, and that's something that I'm implementing in my business this year. I know that for those of you that are watching the Google Hangouts, I did hire or read my blog, I hired an assistant, and she can do some things, but she can't do everything. And so, you know, Jen, when she came to my studio, she's like, sure, you got to hire someone full-time. You can't grow anymore. And I think every studio gets to the point where they can't grow anymore, and every family gets to a point where the photographer cannot grow anymore, or you're going to lose your family. I lost my marriage, and I will be the first one to say that that's the reason that my husband's like, I'm leaving, is because I work too much. But if I didn't do it, nobody else did. And if I chose not to do it and spend time, you know, more time with, with the family, I lose my business. And then, you know, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So I think that's where there's some people coming through here is you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So where is that balance? I well, I feel that way even with having a family because, again, even though I may have a spouse that supports as well, I have my own weight to pull. And there's people that are listening that have to do that. Um, yeah. So I just think that overall that it's it, – I don't know. Balance is really tricky because, like you said, it's you. It's a one-woman show. You've got to do it. So what What offsets it? What if you can't afford to hire somebody? I mean, this is a battle. Not that I necessarily can't afford. I could. I have control issues. <laughs> uh, but So I can't release it. So what do you do if you come to that point? The, a lot of people listening may not have the money or to be able to release to hire someone to help. I think that it's a lot of families who will agree to pull in that balance. So mm -hmm. in my house, if if I don't have someone in my office with me, 
my teenagers and my husband know that there's maybe it's not the office work, but there are things that everybody needs to pull weight around. And with smaller children like Rachel's like and other photographers, that's going to be a little bit different. But there has to be that acceptance from your family that this is who you are. If you were not the law dog, you wouldn't be Rachel. And if I wasn't color bill, I wouldn't be me. And so we are who we are. And that is the drive as business people. We can pretend to be perfect at balancing. I can pretend to cook good. The fact is I don't. And so it, it is what it is. You, you kind of have to just go with it and balance it the way that, that at least suits your, your family, you know? Yeah, I think that's important. I think that what balances for you does not balance for me. I mean, I can I can drive on four or five hours of sleep. It's not. Is it is it seven or eight? No. But you know, I think I think for everyone it's different, and I think everybody has their comfort zone. And if you can't find, I think it's it's not necessarily how what is the balance, but if you can't find the balance, because I think everybody will, you know, what is the balance is different for everybody. It's a different answer. It's a different workflow. It's a different mm -hmm. different. That's uh, a problem with not but, nine to five, five days a week. Oh, hell no. Not owning a company. Yeah. I think it's what if they, you can't find the workflow. Where do you, like, where should you go if you, if you're just like, I just can't find my work, I can't find that balance. What do you do? What do you do if you just can't find that balance? Where do you start? Jen, where do you start? Alcohol. Alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I started. I'm you know, I think, I'll hear from Tammy on this one. Tammy's mm -hmm. got a little Tammy's kid. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have... You know, I I struggled with like life work balance and it came down to deciding what was important and what made me happy and um, and what was important for my kids too. So I made a list of of things that I needed to work on, what drove me crazy, what I didn't want to do, and kind of just broke it down, what I couldn't um, what I needed to basically outsource and I made those things happen. But I had to create structure like within myself and make sure that I I quit work like at five o'clock or four o'clock and it, it, it just comes down to just structure and decide and making that decision that that um, uh, basically what you want to do you know yeah. I mean it, I think it just comes down to deciding. So yeah. Tammy, was there, what was the fear that was involved with all of that? Making the decision, was there any fear? Like, what if I, what if, what if, like, what's the end of that statement? What if? I think I had to just decide that, you know, like, work was going to be there tomorrow. Whether, you know, if, if I didn't get something done, it was still going to be there tomorrow. And that was okay. And that's a good point to make. We sometimes never relinquish that control. Never go anywhere. So, can I chime in? If I didn't raise yes. my hand, so I think there's there's something that I found. I think we first talked about. I think as creatives, our strengths are that we are super creative and we are never short of good ideas. Um, that's also a, a weakness. When we flip the tables, another strength of ours, we look at how many startups, how many businesses fail that start. Right? How many photographer businesses don't make it to their second and third year? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I think that have had us be successful at that is that we define ourselves like our sense of self becomes enmeshed with our business like it becomes who we are mm -hmm. and that's really really good when you're starting because we do all of this stuff that doesn't scale very well but it it helps us it's really 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 good for creating a business we're good at turning off the TV at saying no to the friends that aren't that helpful in, in focusing on what needs to be done so that gets us to here right but now we're all at this spot where okay what got us here isn't gonna get us here and we've got to start delegating and switching gears so that you know what the business is gonna be there tomorrow if I don't check my email in this minute or from the hours of five to eight while the kids are home there's no catastrophe that me checking the email is gonna mm -hmm. fix Mm -hmm. If I can just be with my kids for those three hours when they're awake and home, right? Yeah. Um, so it's it's. I'm not saying I have the answers, but for me, it's been mm -hmm. noticing how my sense of self is is all has every business I've every job I've ever had. That's like that's who I am. I'm a bartender. I'm a trainer. I'm a teacher. Whatever I've ever done, like that's me. I love talking about my job, and now. 
there's a there's more to who I am. I want to be more than just my job. I want to be a dad, a brother, a husband, all of those things, and I've got to let the job take a second seat once in a while. That's a good point. I think uh, I think fear is a big thing. I mean, are we not all motivated by fear? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, you said uh, you know if you don't answer that email, yeah. you know, the world's not going to end or whatever. You know, so, to me, sometimes it will, <laughs> and that's and I need to get out of that mindset. You but, do. You have to let that go. Yeah. yeah. At some point, you have to turn off the email. You have to turn off Facebook. You have to turn off everything and focus on exactly what you're doing at hand, and you'll spend less time doing it. Yep. Well, the one thing I always try to remind myself is at the end of my life, am I going to be sitting there going, oh, I wish I had checked that email five minutes earlier? No. I'm going to wish I had gone to my son's soccer game or my daughter's dance recital. Um, I don't feel like going to choir, so. <laughs> I just think there's a fine line between being driven and workaholic, though, which yeah. kind of creeps into a you know an after the shoot that we talked about before, but... While what we may define and justify as driven, do the other people in our lives see that as a workaholic, which is the justifications for addiction um, that often addicts make. So do we, are we all just justifying because that's what we all are, or is it just oh that we're God, driven individuals? Oh, my God, on this on Ignite. You're totally passionful. Totally. So, so it's because in the chats we're talking about being sexaholics. This is a perfect segue to talking Wait, about. Wait, what? Where'd that happen? I missed that. Talking about, uh, I have this great analogy. Hey, you're a different website. Away, <laughs> oh, that's not public? Whoops. No. <laughs> that's a 9 subscription. Hot, right? Right? It gets to be on everyone. <laughs> okay, so anyway, my, my Tiger Woods segue. So remember when Tiger Woods did his thing, right? There was this really smart therapist. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean his thing? His sex thing or his yeah, sex thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it came out that he's cheating and sex with everybody, yeah. Okay, so what, this great therapist came on and said, this is not, it's not the first time it happened. All of the big superstars have done this, right? And am I saying it's okay? Absolutely not. But here's what happens, and I think we can identify, if we're on, I, I can identify with this, is at our jobs, everybody thinks we're awesome. Our like our colleagues for the most part, right? Our customers going to work is super fun, and here's where it gets tricky: is when you're making a first impression with a customer. There's all these things you've learned to like to cut corners and to be efficient and to to deliver more, but like keep everybody really happy. The bar's kind of low. The, the, the bar's kind of low with your, with your customers, right? But with with my wife, she knows. She knows what I'm capable of, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, if I try to cut corners on something, about sex. <laughs> I know what are we talking about here. Tell us. I'm talking about sex. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm trying to be serious. Stop it, dude. You know what? Nate yeah. has not had enough to drink. If that does not equate to sex, see, it equates to everything in your life. <laughs> okay, so it's like planning a date, right? I, if I just tried to cut corners and go somewhere, like think of the date we're going to go on the day of. That's bullshit. Like I'm, I'm slacking because for if I'm planning a promotion for work, I'll put like three or four days of work into planning that event, every detail, making sure it's perfect, and then I just kind of slack on this other thing. And so to bring it back to Tiger Woods is, it at work there's very few people that hold us accountable, whereas the one place we're always going to be held accountable is at home with our families, and that can if we're honest with if I'm honest with myself. That's why sometimes it's easier to do work than to like step back and focus on the stuff where I know that I can't be efficient and lazy. I've got to bring my full self in order to deliver there. Anyways. That's an interesting point, Nate. I mean, I think a lot of times you think, you know, the wife and kids, they're going to be there, but I've got to make sure i got to get this one customer. i got to make, make them happy, you know, because they're, they're, you think of them as a constant, you know. Yep. Exactly. But who's going to be point. there in a I'll year? Is that client going to be there? Maybe. They may be a repeat client, but your spouse is going to be and your kids are okay, going to be there. Okay, so here's play devil's advocate. That client totally point. can't be there in a year, but my house is going to be there because that's a that's, that's a $3,000 client. And they're going to make my house payment this month, and they're going to pay my telephone bill, and they're also going to put some shoes on my kids' feet. So that customer is pretty important because they're spending a okay, lot well of Well, let me ask you this, Sherry. Is that customer sitting at 1150 at night waiting for your email back about their images? 
Probably not. I mean, as much as I love photography, it's not a life or death thing. They're probably not hounding their emails the way that we are. I think we have a little bit more vigilance because this is our livelihood than our clients have in receiving of those emails. I don't know. I think that I have gotten better client relationships by the fact that I was on the phone with the bride during one of her scariest moments that had nothing to do with photography. She needed one person that knew what was going to happen with her wedding. Everything was crashing down in her eyes, and it was 1 a.m., and I was on the phone with her, and she told all of her friends, all of the brides. Uh, uh, it, I think it makes a difference when you're there no matter what time it is for your client at some point. You do have to give that extra. But what's the? No, I agree. But what is the cost-benefit analysis? If you're spending all this time and all these clients, but you're only getting such a small amount of return. Oh, and I think really the cost is your family and your. Rachel, family. I think you talked to my lawyer because she said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she that. No, Wait, I, those I, lawyers I are smart uh, people. Hey, yeah, I think you chatted with her because she had that whole conversation with me. Enough is enough. No. I see where Sherry's coming from because I've, I've, I mean, if I, if I drag Sally in here, she would say I've used that numerous times. Where, next yeah. I want to see her. I'm Bring her in. I'm going to mute you, Jen. Uh, <laughs> I will be in a room with Sally Ann on the computer. Yeah, Jen's coming here soon. So, but well, yeah, I always say that the end justifies the means. Sherry, I'm like you. Like, look, I know that this is important, but if I don't get this done. We, you know, if, I, if we don't get paid, and if we don't get paid, none of this happens. Well, and everybody's always you know? talking about, you know, you have to have the right client. So if the right client is my three thousand dollar client, who's going to drop three thousand dollars in a senior appointment? Nate, you can get kicked off for that. I'm just giving you a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, that's, that, that's Nate's second mark. He's going to say. I can't it. believe you caught me that fast. I'm oh. listening. She's on it. So if you have, so if you have, you know, that three thousand dollar client, they're more than likely going to have a circle of friends that are also three thousand dollar clients. And if you piss off your three thousand dollar client, like I almost did, you can lose a lot of clients. Like I was not invited to her Christmas party this year, specifically, <laughs> because I have been. But Sherry, I think you're going a little extreme on this because I think that we need to bring it back to understanding what's best for us and our business because if we are not financially, I mean, I'm sorry, emotionally sound and solid with our family and balance, you're not even going to be able to serve all the $3,000 clients that come in the door from those referrals. Right. You and know? I, I mean, it's, I'm you're talking about the 1 a.m. of sitting and rocking and checking Instagram and your email in the bathroom so no one finds you. Well, that's, that's just when a there's John, a bunch of your bathroom with you. <laughs> John, go ahead. John, John, speak. No, no, no. I was just saying, I was agreeing with, uh, with what Rachel was saying. I was like, that's me. That's me. Bam, look at that. See, Shirley? Well, I mean, it goes back to, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the 80-20, the 80-20 concept. You know, people do... They right. work. Uh, there's 20% of the people that do 80% of the work. So mm -hmm. if you take that in your business and you say, I'm going to spend 80% of my time on the 20% of people that the really top work. The, the I'm top not saying slack on your work. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm talking about no, the three moments. I'm saying that if you have to do a work-life balance and you have your top clients that are your big spenders, you want to spend 80% of your time mm -hmm. on those top 20% of your clients. The eighty percent of your clients that are maybe they're the the energy suckers, they're the ones that always are complaining, they're the ones that email you at 10, 8, 10 at night and they're like, Hey, get a hold of me now. You spend twenty percent of your time with them because they're only they're 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 not giving you the top ten percent or they're not that top twenty percent and the rest of the eighty percent you spend on your family. But there has to be, like Jen said, there has to be a schedule, there has to be mm. parameters. What are you laughing at, Jen? I'm not laughing. It's like, ah, you know, it's 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 so funny because it's like I feel like such not not a hypocrite. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm on the journey with you. I'm taking the steps with all of you too. It's it's you have to do it. If you don't, you're gonna be on no, seventy percent fails. I well, mean, I think I people get confused when they hear schedule. They think it has to be nine to five. No, I don't look yeah. at it that way because I can't do it that way. I mean, take no. today for example. My baby wouldn't sleep for the life of him, and so when am I working tonight? Once we get off of here, I want to be doing a couple of hours worth of work. So it's not this nine to five strict 
rigorous schedule that you have to have, but it's knowing that you have to put in, like Sherry was just saying, X amount of work and X amount of clients, but I don't necessarily have to do it right then. As long as it gets done within a quick time frame, you still can appease your clients and get the good referrals out of it. Right. And it's okay. And and one thing Nancy and I have learned the hard way and are and are honestly still learning is the power of no. Agreed. You know? Um, I don't think I've heard that word before. What was that? The power of no. And I will tell you the best way to get work is to decide <laughs> when I say work, the best way to get clients in your door is to decide to limit them. Isn't it even harder to tell yourself no? Oh yeah, no, that's the most impossible thing ever. You're, you know, you're all Please, I'm very demanding of myself. <laughs> <laughs> All of us, though, are entrepreneurs. All we cannot lie here and say that we really would prefer to leave work at 5 p.m. and we would be so fulfilled if we barely. We're, we are entrepreneurs. No. So the the I think the real battle is walking away and stopping what we want to do. That is just like I really, really want to invent something, but it's not going to happen. So I could go to bed. <laughs> at any given time, but you know, I mean, the clients are going to wait, but you have this photo that you're dreaming, and your mind is going to be so spectacular when you do something incredible with it. But all in all, it walking away is probably always the best bet. You get that fresh head. You you are ready in the morning. It, we sometimes just do not tell ourselves to stop. Well, well and I mean, that, that circles back to the fear that John was talking about earlier. It does, but I mean, I, I want to interject here. I um, I was talking actually to my pastor of all people about this a while back, and, and you know, he was even saying it's obvious in our line of business because what we do is creative. But people that work in a very, um, I, I almost want to call it a manic depressive, you know, a highs and lows and adrenaline rush. If you do not give yourself time to reset, if you do not walk away, if you do not take time off during the day, whether it's five minutes here and there to where you just walk outside, one day a week off, take a vacation. If you do not do that, you cannot work efficiently because your brain never shuts off to let the sides switch back and forth and let those moments come. For those of you that aren't familiar with the creative process, go look it up and read up on it, how that creative process works, how your brain switches back and forth, you know, is critical to running a successful business, to coming up with creative concepts, and to being able to carry them out. You have to do that. You have to. And I know it's and it's it's almost like you're holding a gun to your own head because, yeah. like you know, Stacy and Rachel, we've, we've all said we love what we do yeah. to the point that we hate it and we love it at the same time. Sometimes it is so passionate and it's so much that we just can't let it go. But if we don't force ourselves to do it. It, it hits, I mean, you're just, you hit a wall. You you do. Isn't it almost like that marriage that you really like, like 10% of the time, so passionately you want to have sex 50 million times a day, yeah. and then you want to murder it right. tomorrow? Peel the skin off ah. of that person. You can't stand them so much, but you need that oh. time. I stopped at sex. What were we talking about? I yeah. back on sex. Nate calling up. My, my bad, my bad. I told Jake. <laughs> That's on me, guys. So Nate brought up a, a great point earlier because I do I, I want to talk about some solutions here in the last few minutes. Um, and the the book I bookmarked it or the website Nate where you were talking about specific tasks at certain times. I've been doing that and it's been helping out a lot. Do y'all have a certain time or do y'all just sporadically go? Okay, I just got through eating lunch. I'm gonna blog for a second and then I'm gonna go back and edit uh, later today. And then oh god, I forgot I want to build this design template. Yada yada yada. Or do y'all say okay? From 8 to 10 is email, from 10 to 12 is blogging. So John, I'll do that. Rachel. I have to work during nap time pretty much every day except days that my husband teleworks. So I know that on Tuesdays that my newsletter needs to go out, or Mondays I need to get albums designed. And so when nap time hits, then I hit the ground running, Photoshop's open, and I'm designing, 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 and ordering, ordering, ordering. So for me, I already have a set time ahead of time. And I also have Monday through Friday written out on specifically, like we were talking about earlier, switching back and forth between the creative and business side. Um, I'm not trying to do it all at once. Um, I was getting too overwhelmed. It was making more mistakes, which was making me more inefficient in the end. Uh, whereas if I know Mondays are ordering days, uh, then I that's what I dedicate to. And Tuesdays are email and follow-up days. Then I'm all in my email and I'm focused on that. 
Can't you Can say I say something really quick? Because I know that I yes. talk a lot. I say no. I think that, you know what, you know what, Renee, I was going to give you a shout out here for just a minute. So, you know, you were saying that, I don't, at some point during this whole time, you were saying something really important. I was just going to touch on that right now. Um, and that is that, you know, I think that it's really important to have, um, to have the support of your spouse. And so I would like Nate to talk about this. Sorry, John, I'm taking over your position. But I'd like Nate to talk about this and Rachel, because Stacy, all you want to have is sex. And Tammy, this would be great I for don't you. Know. But Tammy, you you know you and Chris both shoot. So Nate, I don't think your wife shoots, and Stacy or Rachel, your husband doesn't shoot. So I'd love to know: Do you sit down and have a conversation with your spouse and say, "Here's what I need from you," assuming they're not any part of your business whatsoever? Because I know there's a lot of photographers out there that don't have a spouse that works with them, and they're at home being like, why are you late? Well, how come you're staying up at night? So how do you have a conversation with your spouse and say, here's where I'm at, here's what I need from you, and here's what I'm willing to give? Yeah, um, I'm glad you brought up my wife, because I was going to talk about her too. Uh, so first thing is, I try really hard to like ask for that stuff and to set expectations as early as I can. Like If I want to go to a conference and she's got to watch both kids, for like that's that's a lot of stuff to put on the other spouse, um, and so it's absolutely open communication and those basic things. But the real, I think the real value I want to share from what I've learned from my, she is a mental health therapist, and so I think is she part available of, for consultations. Yeah, I know, right? so she's gonna come on later, and you guys can we'll, we'll call group therapy. That'll be great. So the thing that I think we let ourselves slip into with. As photographers, um, you want to be like really available and connected to your customers in like a really, like I said before, like you identify your sense of self with your business, all of that stuff. Where not, it's, I think it's one thing to, to end the day working and turn it off, but for me, the bigger challenge is my, even though I've left work, I've left the computer, my brain is still at work for a while. And that's the bigger challenge where. Um, as in, in my wife's training to be a therapist, like you have to have those boundaries. Otherwise, you are not an effective therapist. If you get, if you get emotionally attached to every um, client, it's not going to work. You're not fully servicing your customers or your client. And I think we, as photographers, we can learn a little bit from that. Like we have to be somewhat professionally, like have a, like a layer of a healthy boundary between our role in our job and, and also when it comes to time management, having the clear boundaries between when we're working and when we're not working. Mm -hmm. because it, that's, that's like step A. Step B for me is setting that up in a way so that my brain is actually present with where I'm with where, where I want to be at the present with my wife, present with my kids, etc. And that's those boundaries are tricky because we are again our greatest strength is that we take our our job so personally. If somebody is saying something bad about us online or if somebody's concerned about our business, it feels like they're mad at us and like they're angry at or they're bad talking about us as our like our self esteem and all of that is all intertwined when you know what? It's it's just business, really. And Nate, that is such a good point for you to make, because, and I know this is totally another show, but why the hell do we feel like one simple negative comment is, is like literally you just shot me? Why do we do that? Like I know that we put a lot of passion into our work, but when something doesn't work the way the client feels it should, yep. my world ends. And now my husband feels it, my kids feel it, and then we go back to that whole life balance where I am bringing my work into my family. Yeah. Totally. Well, I think that's just collateral damage because that's what makes us us, and that's what we talked about at the very beginning, that I think that is just one of those things that happens in having a spouse or significant other that understands that that's just part of it. Um, I know that my family gets tired of hearing me complain when I get it nasty email or a tough client, but at the end of the day, is it better to have them be able to provide the things that they want and to fulfill myself or just to walk away from it all because of one or two cl tough clients that may hurt my feelings? 
And this, this is kind of the way I look at it. And I wanted to piggyback on the thing with uh, Nate was talking about that it's really hard to turn your brain off, even though when you leave work, is maybe look at trying to set boundaries. One of the things that my husband and I try to talk about, and I'm not saying we're perfect at this, we're really not, but in the evenings is shutting down all electronics. I mean, we watch TV shows together, but phones get put away, iPads get put away, emails will not be done till morning. Um, it's really hard for me. It's really, because I actually find that it is an addiction, and they've done studies on this, that I find myself reaching for my phone to check my email all the time. So I think just putting those supports into place can help the balance a little bit more. Just open flow of communication with your spouse who doesn't necessarily work with you because they don't understand it. But if you set those confines, then they understand what to expect from you. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't know if my internet's choppy, but no, no. The, <laughs> um, with my kids, um, my oldest is eight years old, and we, with him, I've taught him to tell him, you know, to let me know when enough is enough with the phone. Like, tell me that you need to, can you get off your, mo your phone, mom? You know, can you watch TV with me? So... Um, teaching him to communicate with me better has helped me tremendously, and then it's a it's a um, it's a quick it's, it's a punch in the stomach when your your kid tells you you're on the phone too much. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I think one so, of the you know, so terrified that my that my daughter's going to come home from school with a drawing of a family with crayons, and it's going to be a picture of mom and daddy and baby, and daddy's got the phone like you know. Well, I thought it was just going to be mommy, daddy, baby, and daddy's phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's even worse. Yes. Well, I was I was a I was a bartender for six years at at a at a hotel, and I will never forget how many traveling business, typically businessmen, would sit and and sit, they was so many of them said this like word for word. We're like they'd be like you know what like I just I just think they're probably not gonna remember me being gone until they're like thirteen, right? And it's just like oh. Like, <laughs> I remember my dad was gone all the time growing up. All the time. Now, my dad was a workaholic too, but here's the thing. My dad didn't go to every soccer game, and my dad didn't go to every game, but he went to the big ones. Now, my mom was there. My mom was at everything. So, I mean, you know, but I saw that, and it didn't, I mean, it didn't bother me. I'm just, I'm very close to my dad. So, he knew what was important. Did it matter to me? And when I say soccer, I have no idea how to play soccer. I'm sorry, there's a ball involved. <laughs> <laughs> That's really not even golf. Yeah, like softball. My parents came to every basketball game and recorded it with a VCR tape. Golf. VCR. Yes. <laughs> with the camcorder. <laughs> we, I, we can watch them for the next Google Hangout. They're awesome. I think scored a couple of times. Um, all right, our time is almost out, so I want to close. I want to give away a couple of things. Huh? Say something epic. We need to wrap this up with something epic. I mean, we've. Well, I, I want to go. I want to. We got a couple of great questions because I'm giving away some shot glasses, but I think something epic will come from this. Um, let me see. Make sure I got my notes right. Pam is going to get a shot glass. Woo, Pam! Yeah. Pam's awesome. Pam Wait, had a great quote. Why? Why did she get? Yeah, tell us. Pam said a great quote. No is not a bad word. Yay, Pam! No is not the f bomb. Yes, no is not a bad yeah. word. Um, that was a bad word. And then I want to give a quick shout out. She, she's not winning anything, but a quick shout out to Amanda Carey because she said, "What's up from Atlanta?" And she's oh like, yeah, I saw that. Hey, yeah, Amanda she's Carey. like an hour, hour and a half from me, so that's pretty cool. I always Amanda like to Carey, see. Are you coming to the Georgia PPA convention March thirty first? Yes, comment. Say hi. Um, I make and then um, my whole Donna program. is Donna Park is getting a glass tonight. Donna, she's awesome. Um, Donna Park is my BFF. Yes. Donna said it's hard to be structured and schedule and wants to hear how some of us schedule our day. Just kind of a broad example. So who wants to take that one? Rachel. Rachel. Me. Rachel. Me. Yeah. Um, I take, well, because I am at home, I don't have help with my two little ones that are two and four months. Um, I get the older two off to school. I come home. I try to spend as much time as I can, but like we were talking about earlier, um, I just know there's emails in the back of my mind that I need to answer and do, so I may hop on a little bit while they entertain themselves. Uh, but I try to spend the bulk of the morning with them, 
uh, lunchtime, and then we have everybody has mandatory nap times, no matter how old you are in our house, whether yeah. you sleep or not. Uh, right. I don't care if you're 32, you still have uh, rest time because I need to be able to dedicate a good two to three hours to work. Uh, and then it's pickup time from school and dinner, and then when the husband gets home, I have a couple more hours to work on work. If he's gone, then I wait till the kids are completely in bed, and then I work a couple more hours. Wow. Nate, Dan, who yeah. works at the photography schedule? Um, I don't shoot anymore, so uh, for me, it's, I, I get to be pretty creative with it, but it's, there's just always more to do, and I just... I just remind myself that like when it's all said and done, I I'm doing this for my kids. Like I'm doing this to set a role model, um, to to like provide for their future, doing it for the family. When it's all I wanna have a family to come back to yeah. when I'm done building this thing, right? And there's and along the way, there's certain there's things that are happening that I can never make up. And I could make sticky albums a hundred million dollar business if I worked nonstop. But like whatever, there's there's gonna be, I, I've gotta decide like you know what, it's okay that it's not gonna be as big as I could make it, but I'm gonna have a family that is there for me. And that's, that's what really matters. And it's, I think it really is about setting priorities. Being honest that the business is not gonna collapse because I check out and, and hang out with my family for a little bit. Good okay, so just really quick, John, here's a little rundown of my schedule. So we really talked about a schedule, losers. So I wake up in the morning, I make my coffee, I come to my studio, I read email first. I respond to three email accounts. Then yeah, one of them is deathly. <laughs> death, like, I get so much fan mail on one of them. It's <laughs> I'm well tipsy with that. Some of it's for me, Sherry. So. I have learned so much technical stuff ever. So I read emails first. <laughs> then I text Jen and Nancy and be like, I'm in a meltdown mode. Then, I, it depends on the day. If it's a shooting day, I prepare for my session. I shoot my session. I'm not in my senior season, but what I will be doing is I will come back from my senior, se my senior session. Immediately, I'm going to drop those images. I'm going to put them into a folder, back them up, write my thank you note, create a, my worksheet that says, here's my next workflow. Bam, it goes to the next level. If it's, not a, if it's not a shoot day, then I'm working on blog posts. Blog posts, are, blog posts and social media is going to be Mondays. Um, for one section of my life, and other blog posts are going to be on, like, probably Fridays for another section of my life, and then depending upon the day of the week, if I have a shoot, I schedule my shoot days. If I don't have a shoot day, then it's going to be creative and logical, because I can do both of those, but they have to be segmented. So I might do um, something logical, meaning, like, um, create... I don't think that create an album for me is... Creative. It's very logical because I have it created. I mean, it's already been created, so I just drop them in. It's logical. And then um, creative would be like retouching, that sort of thing. But that is kind of a baby rundown, very messy rundown of my life. I don't have it scheduled. I'm ADD, and I need to be moving constantly. In between those sections, I might throw a load of laundry in. So there you go. Wow. All right. <laughs> I'm exhausted with that schedule. Yeah, let's drop the microphone and shut this thing down. That is it. Well, I think the important thing is, is that you can't adopt someone else's schedule because we all have different circumstances and exactly. things in life. The most important thing is prioritizing everything you need to do every day, keeping a running list of ideas and global things that you need to do, um, just making sure that you get it done. Because my days are completely different from one day to the next. I don't know if one kid's going to start barfing on the floor one day or if the dog's going to start shitting the next day. Like, I don't know, and I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's a common problem around here. Or the kid could shit, you know? Yeah, and the dog could shit on the floor. Yeah, the on the floor yeah, no. You know, so um, I guess I, I just want to leave with the people. I know we probably need to sign off here soon, but the, those that are listening that – don't feel like you have to fit it into a certain sort of schedule. Um, look with what you have. Start with your family obligations first, and then work your way back. Um, and maybe if you're in a different situation, such as Sherry, where you are the only person that's bringing the income, you may have to vary that up a little bit. 
Uh, but I just think at the, when you look at the end of your life, what are you going to look back on? And that's what I try to remind myself. Look back on that wedding album and that senior album that I created with Pam. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to look back, Sherry, that you provided for your children. As weird as it sounds, I'm I'm going to have to create a uh, a family schedule. I, yeah, I, I mean, I think we're putting a lot of weight on, on saying family, and there's some people who that a lot of weight is on business, and we have yeah. to kind of respect that. I don't have a family yet, and that's totally fine. Yeah. I am a, I but but I have a family and though they're my top priority, they understand that at this point in our lives as our family, we are who we are and this is the balance that we get. It may be unfair and I have a fourteen year old daughter, but she gets it because mom time is in the office and she sits here. So there's not a lot of families that can leave and go and, and play baseball out in the backyard. Everybody almost has to deal with it, and and it works for some people. And as long as it works for you, it's good. When I, I used to, when like, I used to turn family, when I used to turn family, I don't just mean that you have kids. Some a lot of people watching may not have kids. It can be just yourself, which yes. is so important as well. I don't. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. I don't know if you guys know Nancy Nardi, but she's a friend, guru of all things awesome guru. <laughs> You know, she is doing Stacy props for the fact that, you know, it's true. Not everybody out there has. Well, you know, I, like, I, I had a conversation with Nancy one time, and she was saying that she was working constantly, you know, 24 hours a day, and then she realized, you know, somebody invited her to play, like, an ex, uh, like an extracurricular sport, and she was like, I don't have time. And she's like, wait a minute. I either make time to do that, or I don't. And if I choose not to make time to do that, then I'm only hurting myself. But if I have a doctor's appointment, I make time to go to the doctor on Wednesday. And if every Wednesday I have a beer league volleyball team that I'm on, I make time to go there because it's the downtime for me. So we make time to do the things that are important to us. And mm -hmm. whether that's a doctor's appointment or coffee with a girlfriend or a little league game or watching your daughter take district championship and sleep. <laughs> Sometimes, so aren't we, I mean, let's yeah. all be honest, aren't we sometimes running from our fucking family anyway, though? Yep. Yes. I said the F word. I did. We are, we sometimes are running to our office on purpose. I'm just putting it out there. Um, Stacy, can you be my girlfriend? Yes, I will. No, uh -huh. Sherry. I'm going to be all of your girlfriends. No, I'm just saying. Stacy, you get to be on every episode along with me. So, Nate, Sherry, and Stacy are now the regulars, and Nancy is the <laughs> for Stacy. So. As long as I can be yeah. naked. Yeah. She's All right, so we're closing up. Oh, no. We're putting the hammer down. Well, we're going off the air, but we can stay for the after. Oh, I know. Yeah. Rachel, the after, after the show. I want to thank um, Nate for being on the night. I want to thank Rachel. I want to thank Stacy, Tammy, Jen, Sherry, um, especially Sticky Albums, and also Lighthouse Custom Color for... Uh, being in our lives, so uh, we're gonna see you oh, in two weeks. To be here. Yep. Yes. Yeah, you two guys weeks. don't want to miss this. Two weeks from now, I will be sitting in John's lap, and Sally Ann will be running the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sally Ann will be on camera. You will be. I will She's make. Like prettier than me. She will be on camera. So, um, Not awesome. As always, follow us on. Uh, you can always ask us questions. Ask Singers at Night. Follow me on Instagram, John D. Pyle. Every one of us. Instagram. Instagram, and uh, we look forward to um, seeing y'all in the next couple of weeks. All right. Awesome. Bye, Thank y'all. Great advice, and uh, I'm going to pull up all those websites. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining. All right. Good night.